Shilpa Nanani and I am an MC, moderator, presenter. I've been an anchor for about 12 years now and um, it's such a delight for me today to be <clears throat> sharing whatever little I know about anchoring with you all. Uh, now, um, in my first Facebook Live, which was about a month back, and I, and I really apologize for not being able to make it uh, for the last one month, but I promise that from now on I will be very regular and uh, you know sharing with you whatever it is that I can share with you about anchoring so in my first Facebook live we spoke about uh, you know the art of anchoring you know who or what is an anchor what does an anchor actually do and I remember sharing with you all that an anchor is it's not just about talking it's about it's a combination skill there's so much that an anchor does he or she literally uh, carries the event on his or her shoulders so today we are going to take a step forward and um, I'm going to share with you um, you know avatars of an anchor so in this uh, episode of the art of anchoring series uh, I'm going to share with you um, a little bit about avatars of an anchor right so what now you would ask me Shilpa uh, do anchors actually have an avatar? And I would say yes, they do. There are there are various roles that an anchor picks up and uh, performs depending on what the event is. All right, so I'm going to take a few moments to peep into my book. Wow, you know, time and again. So please excuse that for me. So do anchors have avatars? Yes, they do. There are various roles that anchors take and pick up and perform depending on what the event is. So now let's start off by sh um, sharing with you what are the different kinds of events right so <clears throat> events are of different kinds there are corporate events there are protocol events there are sports events there are conferences there are game events there are musical concerts there are um, press conferences or press launches press meet then there are wedding events so one by one we will take up each of these events and I will share with you what an anchor can do to mold himself or herself according to what the event demands. So let's start off with corporate shows. Now these are the most popular um, kind of gigs or events that are, that are there out. So now what are corporate shows? Now corporate shows basically are you know your corporate events where there's annual get together or there's an award ceremony or rewards and recognition you know. When there's a gala night it's full of performance performances internal performances and external performances they're full of fun it's all about corporate gigs are majorly about you know having a lot of fun so there's this whole um, the whole vibe or the whole energy about corporate event is audience people get together for a fun time right so that is what a corporate event is all about now having said that corporate events are formal yet they have a slight tinge of informal approach now they're not really formal as against protocol events so what do corporate events require from an anchor now corporate events require high energy like you have to be really energetic on your toes sometimes corporate events go from anywhere between uh, you know one hour to four hours and all this while the anchor has to look good on stage connect with the audiences, engage with them, uh, be a, a, you know, a, a sutradhar in between the events and you know, weave it all together and yet you know, carry the entire event on his or her shoulders and yet make sure that the momentum is not lost. So that is what it is about corporate event. Corporate events are also about making them feel at home. Now imagine uh, you take a XYZ company, now the entire year the employees work really hard and one day is all they get uh, like our school annual days one day is all they get to you know show their talent or enjoy an external performance rewards are given recognition they're recognized for their efforts so this evening is very very special for them and as an MC you need to connect with those audiences make them feel at home so energetically you're telling them that um, we are all here to have fun I'm a part of you and let's you know do whatever it is that we can do to uplift this event to a whole new level you become a part of them and that's what corporate events are all about they're a little informal in nature uh, corporate events also you know, you know require to you to involve your audience you know you have to engage with them you know sometimes they are very shy so that's where your role as an anchor really matters a lot what can you do what can you do as an anchor or an MC to make sure that you connect with them and 
help them hang on their clothes and let loose. And then when it comes to rewards and recognition, you cannot mess up with names. So you, as an MC, it is our responsibility that much beforehand, much, much beforehand, you get the logistics right, you get their names and designations correct. I sh I'll tell you what, I'll tell you an, an experience that happened with me recently is, uh, <clears throat> I was hosting an event, uh, it was a corporate event, and it was about um, you know rewards and recognition and you know, complimented by a few performances. Now what happened is, uh, the whole structure of the event was as an MC, I announced the name and on the screen, um, on the LED screen and on in front of the in front of us on the monitors, the name of the person who is winning the award, I mean the nominee's slide and the name of the person um, is, uh, you know, displayed on the screen. Now, what ideally happened was the person, you know, the, the representative from the company who was managing the slideshow, she went on a break and somebody else was managing uh, the slides there on the con on the console so as an MC I was following what was given to me the entire minute to minute program uh, and the next thing I know is after the first award uh, the slide skips by six like six slides it, it jumps ahead by six slides and immediately there was a kiosk so we had to take a few moments off um, get it um, technically sorted and then get back now when I host an event what well, this is what I do I particularly make sure that I meet my client much ahead in advance get to know what exactly is happening even the minutest details I in fact sit, sit with them and I get the name pronunciation right now why this is important because even though as an MC you're coming just two or three hours prior to the event it should not look like you're an outsider in that four hours you're, you become the face of the company you become a part of the company and that is so important as an MC as an anchor you have to make sure whatever it is that you can do to become a part of the event and deliver uh, you know the audience should not feel like that it's an external MC now when we shift gears to a second kind of event which is the protocol events now what happens with protocol events a protocol event are basically official events okay uh, where dignitaries are invited and as such there is a particular protocol that you need to follow so you can't 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 I specify you know you can't uh, risk with the names and designations you can't do that now what happens is there is a particular protocol that you need to follow in a protocol event. There are rules, there are regulations, there's an order of hierarchy that you need to follow and everything is very structured minute to minute. When, when I do protocol events, with, when I recently did a protocol event with Mr. Bill Gates, with uh, also with the vice, the vice President of India, I was actually given a minute to minute program by Vice President's uh, uh, office it was a very high protocol event and the protocol team actually came forward and they shared an entire protocol list of this is what we need to follow uh, you know every speaker cannot go beyond this limit nobody can go beyond this time time frame so that is the intensity of which uh, protocol events are made of they are very very structured minute to minute you need to go by the minute because uh, the time for these officials is really really important so that's something that you need to take care of you know all events require an MC to be calm and composed but when it comes to protocol events you really can't say good evening ladies and gentlemen or good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to you have to be very subtle, a little controlled in your approach. So you might go, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the da, da Welcome to this summit. Welcome to this conference. So it is that controlled, little subtle. Now, Amrit has a question. What happens when you invite one minister and 10 other come during protocol event? How do you handle that situation? Uh, a very good question, Amrit, that's actually happened with me. Now, more often than not, <laughs> what happens is when I'm announcing their names, somebody from the client side actually comes and, you know, whispers into my ears that announce this name, announce this name, announce this name. Ideally, I try to convince the client that there is, um, you know, you tell me much ahead of the event of what are the names that we need to announce. You know, once the event is going, as, a, as an MC, my entire focus is to get the structure of the event right on stage. And in between that, if somebody comes and whispers into my ears. So that's one thing that you, it requires very high presence of mind like every cell of your body should be highly present in a protocol event you know your mind somewhere else you are here you're being somewhere else you are here doesn't work you have to have a very high presence of mind in a protocol event uh, having said that if there are other dignitaries joining um, one uh, minister on stage ideally we just say 
we welcome Mr. So and So. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. And we are also joined by uh, we are also joined by other dignitaries. Um, you know, and we welcome them. We heartily we extend a hearty welcome to them. Uh, in a highly, in, sometimes uh, with government government events, it's very difficult to gauge who all will join us on stage. So it's very safe to say. Um, so it's so it's very safe to say that. Um, we extend a very hearty welcome to all other dignitaries, government officials, and that will keep you very safe in a protocol event, particularly. You're done with protocol events, we're done with corporate events. The third kind of events are um, the games event, you know, something to do with games. Now, games, jockey, or team building activities, as we call them. Again, it is a very specialized field and very high energy. The momentum has to be on. As a games jockey, it's very important or as somebody who is hosting a team building event, uh, it's very important that you involve everyone, everyone uh, who's a part of the audience to come play with you, engage with, the, engage with them and uh, let them have a gala time. Sometimes people get nervous, they are very shy, usually that is the case and as an MC that's where your job becomes challenging. So you need to make sure that you you know, on your toes, basically games events and, uh, you know, we will come back to, we'll, we'll also talk about stadium related events. In that case, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you're high on energy, always on your toes and involving, you know, maximum number of guests in when you're doing team building activities or games. Now, the whole point is that you have to create a space in, in, a, in a games related event. You have to create a space where the line between children, men and women disappear, right? So your games can be, I mean, of course, you know, there are various kinds of games, but the whole idea in a team building or a games, a games related event is to make sure that everyone becomes equal and everyone is in it together. That's what I understand of games related events. Uh, Amrit has another question here. What do you do when uh, the DJ plays music while you're still talking and interacting with the guests? So ideally, Amrit, what I do is I talk to the DJ much ahead before, much ahead in time, and I, talk, and I tell him that when you hear my voice, you need to put the music in the background. So that's again a thing that the MC has to do. They have to keep in touch with everyone who is a part of the show, the backstage team, people who, the, you know, people who are running the show, the client and the DJ, the console, what kind of lights you want, what kind of sound you want. You need to have a talk before the show itself with the DJ, uh, checking with him or her of what kind of music you would like to be played, what kind of stuff uh, is going to, you know, the DJ can expect and what is it that the DJ is required to do when it comes to free flow of the event. Team building event, it's all about making sure that uh, people let their hair down and just have fun. Again, it's a very high energy event. Okay, Kim has a question here. What happens when your homework, all your preparation does not really work out when on stage, meaning the ball game is totally different. How do you take it forward? So Kim, that actually as an MC, what it has come to me through experience. You know, initially when I started started MCing, of course, you all of us face, face um, too many challenges on the job, but that's the beauty of an anchor. All this is taught to you on the job. The job teaches you how to take care of these challenges, how to handle these challenges. You know, there is no institute which can teach you how to become an anchor. That's something you learn on the job. You start small, you make mistakes. I mean, all of us make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes, you know. Initially, I was very weary that no, 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 I should not make a mistake, but it's okay. Everyone makes mistakes and it's okay to make a mistake. The trick here is to make a new mistake every time. That's the only trick. Coming to press conferences, press launch and press meet. Now, uh, in such kind of events, the audience is basically members of the media. Usually, the duration of such events do not, uh, do, doesn't go beyond an hour or maximum you know, an hour and a half, a couple of hours. The whole idea for an anchor to host a press conference or a press meet is to make sure that while uh, because uh, you know it's a slightly sensitive event while you make sure that you do your job well in terms of announcements and what needs to be shared communication is a key because all press related events are to do with sharing of information or communicating something that is launched a new technology a new product a new service you know, so that communication how does an anchor imbibe that 
uh, as part of the script, right? So while you make sure that you, you say what is needed for you to say, there are a lot of announcements that you need to make as an MC when you're doing a press conference. Having said that, you also need to make sure that you include the whole substance or the crux of the event in your uh, content and communicate the same to the audience, the members of the media essentially. Now, while he or she manages the stage, they also need to communicate with the members of the media. Having said that, in a press meet, what also happens in another area is the Q&A session. After the launch is done, after what needs to be communicated has been communicated, the floor is open for a question and answer session where the representatives of the company, uh, have, you know, it's a platform which is a direct platform for members of the media to, uh, you know, ask any query that they might have with the, uh, you know, representatives of the company on stage. Now, as an MC, it is very important that you moderate that session very well. Sometimes when celebrities are involved, the members of the media, they will take this opportunity to ask questions which are outside the dimension of the event. And that is something that might not be uh, very comfortable with the guests. So as an MC, how do you step in to make sure that you put the point across that can we restrict the questions to the dynamics of the event and also communicate in a way where it is not rude. You know, it's very important that you say what you want to say and are not rude or, uh, you know, for want of a better word, straightforward. Very subtly, you know, with a request, very kind request, you tell them that, can you please restrict this question and answer session to what the event is all about. And so as an MC, you need to be very sensitive. You need to moderate the Q&A session very well when it comes to press conferences and press meets. Another vertical of events are, you know, conferences. Now, which are very, conferences are very highly technical in their approach. You have a biotech conference, a medical conference, an IT conference, a designing conference. Now, these are very information driven, right? So people who are seeking that information are a part of the event. People who um, are looking forward to share that information are a part of the event. Essentially, uh, it's a very filtered audience when it comes to these kind of events. So your speakers, delegates and audience are all there for a purpose and the purpose is not to have fun. The purpose is to learn, engage and grow and network, right? Now, as an anchor, sometimes for a conference, you don the hat of a moderator, which is connecting the dots between the speaker and the audience. Now, when such events come to us, we have very little time as an anchor to gauge the subject matter, you know, I mean, if, if I'm an anchor, I might have no clue about medical, you know, the, the vertical of medical. But when an event comes to me, when a medical conference comes to me, I might have maximum a day or week's time to gauge what the entire, uh, you know, conference revolves around. And in that, in that number of days, I have to make sure that I pick up the crux of the entire event and you know, share it with the audience and the delegates in a way that it again looks like I'm a part of that organizational community. Of course, the whole idea is to share information. It's a very information driven, filtered audience, that, like I mentioned. But as an anchor, you need to connect the dots between the speaker and the audience. In this whole process, when you listen to various speakers, you yourself learn so much that by the end of second or third day, you're pretty much able to, you know, share or uh, innovate on what has been shared and, you know, put it in your own words and share it with the audience. So conferences, again, are very uh, simple. You play subtle, you really can't. It's a very, uh, you know, filtered and a very learning approach that they come with. So you really can't go out of your box in terms of energy. You can't say, ladies and gentlemen, this is the summit of this thing. The conference is this. No, you know, you have to be like very, very subtle, controlled uh, approach again when it comes to conferences. So now that we're done with corporate events, we're done with uh, protocol events, we're done with games related events, we're done with press conferences and press events, we now move towards musical concerts. Now musical concerts, um, again, it's about building a certain kind of momentum. But as an MC, this is something that I was told by a very experienced anchor a long time back that a few events uh, require the well, MC is kind of carrying the entire event on his or her shoulders. More often than not, but some events an MC is not the star of the show, and musical concerts or any concerts is one such event. You know, 
you are not the star of the show you are there to complement the star of the show right so you have a musical concert where you have a performer uh, coming and performing and sharing their uh, you know music or their dance or whatever the performance related event that is now when that happens as an anchor your only job is to complement them right so you are this invisible element of the event which gives visibility to the event that's how i would like to put it so uh, now what happens uh, with a music a musical concerts right so what happens is ideally uh, sometimes the artist might not come on time you know there might be technical delays more often than not it happens considering it's the indian standard time so as an anchor how do you manage that time gap well how do you manage the time gap in the way that the momentum is maintained the excitement doesn't go down for the audience that's where your role becomes extremely important right your approach as an anchor depends on the kind of concert as well now for example if it's a rock concert and if you're uh, you know if it is a, a typical commercial bollywood concert right so you can't go subtle in your approach right you have to establish the connect the energy the momentum momentum from the word go right so you as uh, suppose if it is a rock concert you can't say ladies and gentlemen we have come to this concert or whatever it is that you want to say you have to really kick start the event in a way where the the, you, from the word go you establish that energy that this is going to be a rocking evening and we have one of the most phenomenal performers joining us in a short while so ideally as an mc you need to set the mood of the event what is the mood of the event the mood if it is a ghazal or a sufi concert people come with a very relaxed approach they're here to just enjoy the music you know not necessarily to dance and have fun there is no dance floor right so that is the mood so as an mc it is your responsibility to establish that mood that energy from the word go maintain the momentum all through the event there are times when the artist will get late there are times when the artist takes break breaks how do you manage that momentum till the very end that's what an anchor's role would be in a music concert so chetan has a question what are the common questions one has to ask the client before the show okay uh when i go to a client i ask everything what is the event what is the name of the event who are the audience you know who's the audience what's the audience structure what is their age you know what is the ratio i mean where are they coming from are they from are they local you know local guests are they from pan india or are they are they from across the globe i understand what is the artist what was the intention behind this event for them so all these questions i ask to you know everything that i think i need to do to do my job well i ask all those questions we have one more question from kiran who has more like the concert the artist or the mc so like i mentioned kiran basically um, in a concert it is always the artist the performing the main star of the artist now please understand that the audience is coming to that event for that artist like for example if rekha varadwaj is performing or if uh, vishal and shekhar are performing the audience is coming to listen to them right the fact of the matter is that as an mc my job is just to complement vishal shekhar or rekha bharadwaj or xyz artists that's my only job that's why i mentioned this line that you are the invisible element of the uh, event that gives visibility to the event you need to kick start the event uh, and set the mood from the word go another vertical of events are weddings now weddings are all about a sense of belonging with the family right um uh, it in in a wedding an anchor pretty much becomes a part of the family chacha ji kaki ji tau ji mausa ji bua ji um uh, when i pick up a wedding event i make sure that i uh, pretty, i mean uh, not get into the details of the families but at least have a hands on information of uh, you know hands of information of, about you know who are the major family members and you become a part of them and you talk to them uh it's all about personal connect i would say in a wedding any wedding related even any social event but that is anniversary celebrations it's all about a personal connect with the client it's a mood of celebration joy for the entire family they look forward to this day uh, for almost 6 months 8 months so as uh, as as an mc you need to become a part of that event 
What I know for sure as an anchor is that it's very important to know what to say. It's very important to know where to start. It's extremely important to know when to stop. You should know, no matter what your event is, you should know when to stop speaking. Okay, Daman has another question. What's your favorite kind of an event that you have, have fun hosting? Corporate musical concert seminars, weddings, press conferences. I personally like corporate events and protocol events, Daman. Because corporate events is again, a lot of fun element. You can just be who you are, you know. This is your personality and this is, you can just project that while involving with you know, the audience, engaging with them. Uh, protocol events because it's just a thrill, you know. It requires you to be so mindful, so mindful that not even for a second can your concentration break away. So I like that in a protocol event. Uh, how do you drive the butterflies at come and standing on the stage, Pawan? Uh, you know what, even to the date I get butterflies in my stomach. I, to be very honest, I sweat in my palms, I sweat in my armpits. Even after 12 years, every event does that to me, but I, I do it anyways. So I tell those butterflies to hang on there. We're going to have a great time. It's going to be a safe event. It's going to be a great event. And I go on stage and I do what is required from my side. So I hope I've answered those questions. We have a few more questions that I'll come back to uh, in a little later. So weddings are done. It's about personal connect. It's about being a part of the family, being together with them and establishing a personal connect. I mean, more often than not, what I've noticed is in weddings, the DJs, the artists, basically the MCs, they more or less become a part of the family. Uh, our last sector of events are sports events or stadium events. Now what happens? Now stadium re related events require the highest amount of energy, the highest because I'm talking about talking to an audience of 5,000, 10,000, 12,000, 15, 20,000 and you're just one sole person. Sometimes you're just one sole person who's managing that energy, right? So you better be on your toes when it comes to doing stadium events, right? Sometimes the team that the audience supports, right, might not be doing so well. But as an MC, if you can, you know, up the energy game of the audience, just make sure what is required to increase their uh, energy levels, you will notice that in turn that affects the performance of the team members and why i can say that i can see that because everything in life is energy right so if the players see that the audience is supporting them invariably something clicks in them as well and they start doing better so as an mc you know how do you manage that energy where in a stadium related event is uh, what an mc's job would be when it comes to stadium related event you as you know as an anchor especially for sports or stadium related events you need to make sure that it's your job to uplift that energy to a whole new level. It's very important that um, you know you, you manage that energy so well that the entire stadium is roaring with applause and cheers and that's what the stadium related event is all about. So yes, so what are the different kinds of events? We have corporate events, we have protocol events, we have press conferences, um, we have games related events, games jockey or team building activities, then we have conferences. Then we have musical concerts. I think I've covered press conferences and press meets. We have weddings and we have sports. Now, in all these events, how does an MC, an anchor, mold himself or herself in a way that they become a part of the event? So when you go to an event, when you are called to host an event, understand what the event is. What is the kind of vibe or the energy the event requires? If it's a corporate event, you can be yourself, go larger than life, have fun with the audience, make them have fun, engage. And so also with weddings and stadium related events. But if it's a press conference, if it's a protocol event, you need to play a little subtle, little controlled and elegant, graceful and still be yourself. A few questions when you meet your client before the event, when you ask them questions of what is this event all about, those questions when you sit and answer, they themselves will tell you what does the event require you to be, right? So if I'm hosting a government event, I can't possibly go in a glamorous golden color sequence gown, right? Because that's not the mood of the event. So you need to understand what the mood of the event is. If it's a little serious approach to the event, you play formal role as well. If it is all about having fun, then you go all out and be informal, right? Rishav has a question. How do you actually build up the mood of the people during a press conference? Like I mean, starting with a semi-casual mood and taking them to a very serious note. So Rishav, uh, every moment in the event actually um, 
tells you of how it wants to be taken forward, right? So uh, let's say if a press conference, let's say if it's launch of a product, let's say if it's, I'm assuming if it's a launch of a mobile phone, right? So there's a lot of, uh, fun and frolic, there's a lot of glamour, the way the phone is launched. Uh, that is a very informal or a semi-casual mood. Then when the launch is done, you can just tone out a bit. Okay, so we will now start with the Q&A session. Maybe we request you to please restrict your questions to the dynamics of the event. So that's how, that's the shift you can make uh, when it comes to press conferences. Again, press conferences, you really can't go out of your way. You cannot be really informal, you can't do that. You have to be a little controlled. Again, every event is different. Having said all the kind of uh, different genres of events, every event is different and the event will tell you what it requires you to do. If you can just, I mean, that is what I do. I, I Before the event, I go, uh, I go silent for a couple of minutes and I ask myself, what is that it requires from me and can I be that? Can I just be that? Pavan has another question. If a professional like you has butterflies, then can you imagine what would I go through for a layman like me? I have an event tomorrow and I have a two minute window to speak in front of 5,500 plus crowd. Please give tips. Pavan, uh, there's something called opening your heart out, right? If, if you can just open your heart out and tell the audience that this is first of its kind for you and you're very nervous and if you make mistakes, please, I apologize for the same. Trust me, you will feel better because you've told them your biggest fear, that your biggest fear is that you're saying this on stage in front of so many people and you will be thankful and you will be surprised of how the audience reacts to you. If I were you, I would tell them that uh, this is my first time on stage that I'm addressing a gathering of you know so many numbers and if I make a mistake I apologize I have butterflies in my stomach so I hope you really look at the intention of what is it that I want to say and not what I'm saying right I would say that and I would actually do that when you open your heart to your audience it's amazing of how you build a connect it's it's phenomenal actually so I would suggest I mean if I were you I would do that okay so anybody else who have any questions please post it here but DJ can cracky sometimes how do you handle that so Amrit actually you know every event has its own consciousness sometimes things can get weary and exactly the moment uh, why an MC is required to manage an event see uh, an event manager's job is to manage the crisis or a lot of things together similarly an MC's job is to manage the stage flow uh, when cl clients call me for various reasons, they say, no, we, we don't want to go for an MC. I always tell them, please have a good MC. He or she will give, will make a huge difference and they are the ones who are going to give definition to your event. And a good MC, a good experienced MC, they will just handle your event in terms of any crisis. Okay, we have one more question from Amrit. How do you handle when invited speaker from client side comes on stage and talks beyond his time limits? So... Uh, ideally, Amrit, I've always made sure that I've talked to my clients about the same. I tell them that we hope we have communicated to the speaker that this is his limited time. I remember I was doing this international conference and there was this gentle, the speaker, gentleman on stage and he would go on and on and on. And uh, his uh, you know, uh, designated time was about 15 minutes, I guess, or 15 minutes. And he went on for over 45 minutes and we were continuously giving him chits so time is up so time is up i would stand there near the stage to give him a heads up that you know we need to wind up the event but he would he just wouldn't budge so finally my client had to go on stage and whisper in his ears that so a couple of our delegates have a flight to catch and we're running late we would request to please wind up the event so like i said i mean anchoring skills or speaking skills on stage it's not just not about what you say as much as it is about what you say it's also about knowing when to start what to say how to say and when to stop right it should never be a case where the audience is just holding their heads and said when will this end no you should always leave the audience asking for more and not um, get them to a point where they're like oh can you just get done with it i plan to get a lot of stuff on board very soon i promise i'll be more regular with you all in sharing my content and whatever it is that I can share um, for the community, for the benefit of the community at large. And uh, please keep supporting me. Please keep giving me all your love. It, it is what kicks me to do better things and go beyond my own boundaries.